Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of So Into That, the podcast where I get to chat with really cool people about the things that we are so into right now. Wednesdays no longer have the like, oh, I'm halfway there, halfway through the hard work week allure that they did before I had kids. Before you have kids, at the end of the day on Wednesday, you're like, all right, baby, only two days left till the weekend, till I get to sleep in, till I get to do whatever I want all day long. Once you have kids, weekends are different. And I'm not saying I don't enjoy our adventures, the fun that we have with our children, because I do. But they are not relaxing. And that is the truth. George and I, I've talked about this on Instagram before, but George and I do this thing called alone days. Since we had three kids, they've become much less regular. But when we only had two kids, we did them every single weekend. And we would trade off. And on like either Saturday or Sunday, one of us would have an alone day. So we'd like wake up, all have breakfast together, hang out for a little while. And then one of us would dip out and like go to the gym, maybe go play tennis, go for a hike with friends, go out to lunch. What I mean, the sky's the limit. George would always go hunting a couple hours away. Sky's the limit. You can do whatever you want on an alone day. It's your day. And the other partner would like happily not begrudgingly, very happily hang out with the kids and be the parent all day. Since we had Cashy, they've become much less frequent because three kids is very much all hands on deck when they are four, three, and one. So they become less so. Uh, but yeah, weekends are weekends are not relaxing anymore. Fun, uh, you know, enjoyable, but but also in many ways, my work week is easier in some ways than parenting. You know, parenting is hard, and like every day is a new day, and you can't just like get good at it. My work, I like it's predictable. I know what I'm doing. Nobody screams at me. If I give them, if I give my work a banana and it snaps in half, it's cool with it. It just eats it in two pieces. It doesn't like throw it in my face and run into its room and slam the door. You know, just an example of something that might happen in somebody's house. <laughs> anyway, happy hump day, whatever that means to you at whatever phase of your life you are. Okay, let's talk about Sola. Sola L. Whaley is my guest today. And I was so excited to have Sola on. I have admired her for such a long time. She worked at Bon Appetit during like the heyday of when everyone was obsessed with Bon Appetit test kitchen videos. COVID, I feel like really kicked the Bon Appetit test kitchen videos uh, obsession into like overdrive. People were at home. They were trying to learn how to cook. So they were watching these videos. The Bon Appetit test kitchen test kitchen videos were funny and insightful and they're all they were all great teachers um and solo was my favorite there's a there are many different people in the test kitchen lots of different personalities solo was always my favorite she was a bit you know soft spoken and kind of no ego and just funny and cool and her recipes always rocked and I've loved her for a long time. She has since left Bon Appetit. She has a video relationship, like t- post does a ton of video content with the New York Times. She has a show on the History Channel, a cooking show where she recreates. Well, you'll hear her talk about it, but a show on the History Channel. She's done stuff with HBO Max. She has a lot going on. She also published her first cookbook this year. It's called Start Here. And it's basically like culinary school and a cookbook. Tons of text, tons of photos. If you want to learn to be a better cook, this is a great book for you. It doesn't just teach you the recipe. It teaches you like exactly why are we doing it this way? What's the technique? What else can I cook this way? A very cool book. It came out in October and like six weeks before that, she gave birth to her first daughter. So it's been a fall for Sola. She's got a lot going on. And what I had anticipated us chatting about was her book. Like I know her as this awesome food personality. I wanted to hear more about the book, how she wrote it, why she wrote it, all the things. And we get into that a little bit, but the conversation went in a way that is so much more interesting to me 
And that's why it went that way because I kept asking her questions. We talked so much about just being a new mom. The her her thing that she's into right now is the baby toy that no parents should go without. I only got this toy for my third kid and it was a complete game changer. Like I could work, I could do a Peloton for like an hour and he would just happily be on this toy. So we get into that a little bit. And then we just get into pregnancy, birth, labor, especially postpartum and the things that we kind of feel duped on. Things that we wish we had known that is incomprehensible why we weren't told. And that is one of my favorite things to talk about. I love talking to women about the shit that we should have been told, that we weren't told, that like if we had just been prepared, life would have been a lot easier, especially around pregnancy and birth and the postpartum recovery. Um, So we get super honest about all of that. If you are pregnant or expecting, or if you have already had children and you're just looking for a little validation, this is the episode for you. So we talk about that a bit and then we do get into her incredible career and all the things that make her one of my favorite food creators out there. Solo rocks. This episode rocks. I'm really excited for you guys to hear it. So here she is. Welcome to So Into That. I'm so excited that you're here. You, We tried to do this in person, but when I am in New York, you are headed out on the second leg of your cookbook tour, which I want to hear about later. But first, let's get into what we are so into right now. Um, since we were just talking about my cozy clothes, I'll kick us off by talking about my sweatpants. I, oh my gosh, also speaking of the fact that we're both constantly covered in either puke or poop, Friday night, I was over at my friend Jess's house. They had us over for dinner and Cash, my third, was like out crawling in the yard and James, Jess's husband, went to pick him up and he was like, oh no, oh no, this baby is covered in poop. And I was like, what? He had (laughs) crawled through, crawled through dog poop. So not his poop crawled through dog poop. So speaking of oh, making that's in that my future. Third, uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, and yeah. it totally is. You have yeah. dogs. Like this is crazy enough. We have a dog. This has never happened in my, but it was like dark. We were all outside. We were having dinner. Cash was crawling through poop. So I pick him up, take him inside, wash him off. And I'm like, okay, you know, it takes like 10 minutes, like washing. I take all mm-hmm. his clothes off. I'm ready to go back outside. And my friend Jess comes to check on me. And she's like, okay, you ready? Like, let's, I'll help you get back outside. And she looks down at me and I am now covered in poop. So like, I'm wearing these like nice new pants. I'm covered in poop. So she hands me these sweatpants. And this is my product of the week. They are Gap. If you're watching this video, I'm modeling them. <laughs> they are Gap vintage joggers, vintage soft classic joggers. And I've, never been more comfortable in my entire life. I like own plenty of sweatpants that are like fancy designer brands. These are it. This is the pant that you need. Okay. Do you own them? I'm sold. I'm, I'm going to get some. This is it. Like I, think I only want stretchy bucks. waistbands. Yes. Like that's the best <laughs> waistband. I, I got, I, these are a size, these are like my true size. And I feel like I normally size up in sweatpants to make them kind of baggy, but then I look like a dump truck so i don't wear them like in public but these are kind of like fitted to my body and so i'm like oh these are this is a cute outfit and so i'm i've just been wearing them non-stop i'm not ne- just you're never getting these back she's a podcast listener she's never getting <laughs> these sweatpants back okay so that's my product of the week what are you so into well so because my whole life is baby it's whole the life. i'm sure you have this already it's the fisher play, price kick and play it's nothing like, is better. <laughs> it's a life changing toy. So nothing is better. I w- in the beginning before we had her, I was like, "Oh, babies don't need toys. Everything's entertaining. We don't need to get that much stuff." Yep. Um, and then I w- I'm totally wrong. I'm totally wrong. Uh-huh. The putting her on that thing, she can entertain herself for like an hour. We don't it's have insane. to worry about her. She loves it. all the songs. Are I don't if if any of the listeners haven't seen this toy, maybe you. Uh huh. Could be. <laughs> <laughs> a little monkey in the bubblegum tree yeah yeah I, I i love it i love it. it's burned into my brain but like burned okay have you seen the video of john legend singing oh yeah it's so good <laughs> there's a video of john legend like chrissy teigen's like draped on his piano and i think i in my head she's involved anyway and he's like singing a beautiful rendition of the song that the little little monkey in the bubblegum tree 
Well, the toy has several songs. I'm yeah, trying yeah. to Lots learn of all of them. I currently just there. know that one. That one is like Don't a you very worry. catchy <laughs> tune. Oh, yeah. it's, it's a good song. I think that's the one that like adult, I think this toy has been around for many, many years. That's the one that adult parents will like still sing to me. Like they'll see it in the background of my videos and they'll DM me like little, little monkey in the bubble. Gum tree. <laughs> <laughs> but it's an incredible toy. I actually did not have the kick and play for my first two kids. And I think, I don't know if a friend sent it or if I just like needed some new swag for number three to keep him entertained. Mm -hmm. I got it. Wow. And then, you know, you can move the piano. Once they start sitting up, you can move Mm -hmm. the piano, Mm -hmm. sit and sit and play. Kick and play. There's there's so much to do with it. And and it's really funny because, so as I mentioned, after feeding her, we have to hold her up for half an hour. Um, So fun. And then after that, she just starts screaming because she's like, I have to get to work. It's time for me to kick and play. Like she, she'll eyeball it from the corner of the room and be like, let me, I, I am a busy baby. I got places to be. I get me out kick. of your arms. <laughs> I gotta go play. Yeah. I don't care if I vomit all over it. <laughs> I gotta get on there. I'm sure it's covered in vomit. Yeah, but it's so easy to clean. Yeah, yeah. Coat in vomit. You just swipe it off. I mean, Cash's was drenched in vomit at all times like he'd just be rolling around in his <laughs> kick and play vomit i was like this is like spleen it kind of is like that plasticky material so they can kind of splash in it and that was a, that was a whole other game for him uh-huh yeah like a whole uh, other potential slip and slide, <laughs> slip and slide. A little but all slip vomit and slide. yeah mm-hmm. just vomit slip and slide okay my non-product thing of the week that i'm so into is a technological advancement that I feel like not enough, it doesn't get enough praise for the joy that it brings into all of our lives. Every single time that you go to a friend's house and you say, what's your Wi-Fi password? And they pull up their Wi-Fi and they go, oh, just put your phone close to mine. And your phones just Uh talk to each other. (laughs) Yeah. That is living. That's living. And I feel like it just all of a sudden happened. Like all of a sudden our phones just started doing it and we didn't take a moment to pause and tell it, wow, thank you. This has really enriched my life. So that's my thing of the week. Every single time that I go to a friend's house or, you know, wherever and you get on the Wi-Fi that way, every single time I feel like like Xenon girl of the 21st century. I'm like, this is it. <laughs> this it's all about like- the little things. Yeah. And it feels so good. I'm like, I didn't have to type your 30 character password in. You didn't have to go rummage through your junk drawer to find that slip of paper that says it. Like, this is living, baby. This is this is 2024. <laughs> <laughs> that's mine. Okay, what's yours? Uh, it's also baby related because that's my whole life right now. That's uh, life. She can smile now. <gasps> like oh. not 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 just fart smile, but like a real smile. Like she meant to. Like she meant like to you look at her. Yeah, so that's fun. So we're constantly trying to make her smile, and it's fun because she's very easily entertained. She thinks we're the most funniest people Ugh. on the planet. We just Ever. make fart noises in her face. Yes. Um, my husband does, like, a lot of pretend fighting and, like, you know, have the baby punch him and then oh. fling back, and then she just bursts into, you know, these silent laughs. She doesn't have, like, a big laugh yet, but it's, like, yes. kind of funny because you can see she wants to laugh. She's making the laugh gesture but no noise comes out yet oh my god i love the silent laugh phase and then it gets it so uh, i have good news for you i don't know if you are like i am with your baby where like are you already missing like you're like oh she's already outgrown this does it make you sad that she's like getting older no okay good i just want to walk on out of here (laughs) Hey, honestly i'm so jealous of that i am one of those moms who like really mourns the passing of every phase like i love babies even you talking about your baby like makes me ugh. like I just want to jump into the computer screen and find her and like squeeze her. I'm obsessed with babies. So when they get older, it really hurts me. But the laughing thing, I am happy to report. I have a five-year-old, a three-year-old and a one-year-old and they keep thinking you're funny. I'm sure <laughs> all the like the moms of like teens are like, no, they don't. But at age five, I can still like make a fart noise and make my five-year-old like die laughing. So I like that. Yeah. there's time for us yet to continue to be the funniest person that they met. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that when she gets older, I'll miss a lot of the baby things. But right now I'm just like in it. So I'm, I'm, yes. I'm 
I'm glad that she feels sturdier now because I was really yeah. scared the first couple of weeks. Like now she can hold up her head and it just, she's not so teeny tiny and uh, I'm not as scared like changing her and putting her in clothes. Everything was oh, scary the before. Worst. Putting them in clothes when they're that tiny is the worst. You're like, is am I literally going to snap her head off by putting this t-shirt on her head? And why did this company make the t-shirt hole so small? Like, oh, the, my 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 uh, mother and mother in law buy the most impractical clothes and like bags and bags of it. My mom sent like yes. two packed bags, and yeah. nothing has like. I really only put her in like the head to toe either snaps or zippers, but my mom will get like. My mother in law's obsessed with these like these little uh Wednesday style collars. Oh that have Wednesday buttons, style. Peter buttons Pan in the style. back. Oh, mm-hmm. oh, the buttons in the back for the tiny babies. What how, is wrong with you people? How am I supposed to put that on her? Roll the baby over onto its stomach. And there's so half her like, like fl- screaming. She's flailing. <laughs> oh, they're the worst. And then my mom just <laughs> gets like tiny like people clothes but for babies like she got her a tiny bathrobe oh yeah a tiny bathrobe perfect (laughs) because after because after bath time she's not just screaming at me to get her (laughs) bottle and go to bed yeah we're just chilling yeah we're like having a a, a cup of tea but you know you gotta i gotta put them in everything once take a picture make them happy and then she just like lives in the like zippies yes zippies have you discovered the um magnet I haven't tried that, that yet. What are they called? Oh, it's really good stuff. What are they called? Um, Magnetic Me is the brand. And instead of snaps or instead of a zipper, it's like, it looks like a snap. It looks like a button, but they're just magnetic. So all you do is like throw their clothes <laughs> over the front of themselves and it just snaps together. It's incredible. Oh, okay. We're going to have to try one of this. Really, truly an incredible invention. I don't know why they're like not more. It's like one of those, if you know, you know, brands mm-hmm. like fantastic my kids only have like three pairs like one pair per each age because they're kind of expensive they're like 40 bucks for like a freaking onesie but man lots of wear and tear on those ones and all three wore them so there you go um okay so you you birthed two things in the fall of 2023 one uh believe it or not i think probably weighed more than the other and that is Uh your gigantic gorgeous just like instruction manual encyclopedia of a book that is called start here and you birthed it a month after having a baby yeah it was exactly oh no two months months. two months two months okay just barely though i just because she the baby came early okay 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 oh thankfully okay yeah that give you a little more time if she came on time i don't know how i could have done this because i had to go on tour right after so it really worked out that she was early and i got a little bit more recovery time so Um, you went on tour seven weeks postpartum eight weeks postpartum yeah eight weeks how are you doing um so the first leg was not bad because she was so small she came with you no she didn't come with me Okay. Um, but I didn't feel as bad because I don't think she noticed I was gone. Yeah, she didn't know anything. No, she didn't know anything. She wasn't even like f- look, looking at us yet, you know. Yeah. But um, this she's round, like yeah. yeah, this round, I'm, I'm, she, I'm gonna leave in two weeks, and she's gonna be five months. So yeah. I'm not thrilled about leaving her, and this is gonna be like almost a two week stretch. Um, for <sighs> the first yeah. half since it was all East Coast, I was just doing overnights, and we spread okay. it out. We spread the tour out over like six weeks so i was not gone for very long and it was very easy to like pump and and have milk for her so i don't like have enough milk frozen and and i'm gonna be gone for so long it's gonna be rough and she's going through this like sleep regression well great get out of there for the sleep regression i feel bad leaving my husband dealing with no 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 (laughs) there's just there's times when we just leave the husbands to handle certain aspects (laughs) no i know i not to trivialize at all it's so we we emailed about this a little bit this week we it's so hard to leave them the first real time and then yeah as they start to get older you like feel like they are noticing your absence but i do feel like it's like a muscle uh being a working mom you like you get stronger and you get like better at it and like repetitions make it easier which 
also sort of makes it harder because you're like, God, this sucks that it's becoming easy to leave my kid. But it's just what we do and we get back. And I swear I've been gone. I think the longest I've ever been gone for my kids is like eight days in a row. And you get back and they literally are like, what's up? You're back. Mm -hmm. And like, they didn't notice you were gone. They have no, they have no, they're like goldfish. They have no concept of time. So that's the good news. You get back, you jump right back in. The hardest part is you get back and your husband's name is Ham, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Ham's going to be like, okay, I just dealt with the sleep regression while you were gone. Like you take her and you're going to be like, wait, I was on a two week, I was on a two week road trip book tour. Like I need us a, a nap. And he's going to be like, no. Oh no, he is. He is. I know. I'm just probably uh, going to like nap with the baby for the full two days when I get back. Yes. Yeah. Sleep with the baby. That's the best thing to do. What has been the most challenging part of new motherhood? for you and i know that's a very loaded question because so much is challenging but what's been like oof that rocked me i i don't i don't know a lot of things i guess i was really preparing for the like mental health changes Uh you know i was really worried about postpartum depression so i started working early as soon as i got pregnant i found a therapist who specializes in like mothers Um, wow so so that that part has actually been fine. It's the physical recovery that I did not prepare myself for as much. Yes. Um, so that surprised me like a lot. Like I, I I started working a week after having her, and then I started working like out of the home at three weeks, and I like was not. Oh my god! I don't. I don't that was way too soon. <laughs> you yeah. know, Because like having like mesh un- underwear out in public is not fun. No, dude. Whoa. And like, you know, I, I hadn't stopped bleeding yet. So things no. like that, I like did not realize how long you really do need to just like physically recover. Be in your bed with your baby. Yeah. Somebody yeah. bringing you your baby. Yeah. That stuff in like some parts of the world, women are like encouraged not to leave the house a single time for 40 days. It's like a 40 oh, day. Oh, wow thing and like everyone makes your food for you and like waits on you hand and foot and you are like physically supposed to like stay in your bedroom kind of like in the bed you know go on walks whatever you're not a prisoner but it's like you're truly supposed to be just like taking care of recovering and I'm like why did no one tell me that because I agree I had postpartum depression and the postpartum recovery and I was like why did nobody tell me that my like whole Below my belly button was just going to be like wrecked. Well, and it's crazy because I read a lot of books to prepare and everything was about like pregnancy and labor. But and and, like people talk about like in the books, they they mention this like fourth trimester. But I want to know the nitty gritty. Like I wish I was a little more prepared for like the the giant blood clots and the painful urination. (laughs) Yes, I (laughs) I let's let's prepare the women because yeah, only you women need to know. You need to... I couldn't pee like I like couldn't control my bladder for two weeks after I had my first kid. I thought I would never I thought I would never I thought I'd have to wear diapers for the rest of my life because mm-hmm. I'd never heard of this before. So many women have bladder issues after they have kids. I had never heard of it before because there's just not enough like literature out there preparing us. Mm-hmm. Some bullshit. I was also quite surprised by how difficult nursing was for me yes. it t- it took me about 6 weeks to really get into the hang of it where it wasn't painful anymore where oh, yeah. it, it it was especially the first like the first few days was incredibly painful and i kept thinking i was doing something wrong yeah we got a lactation consultant i didn't i just thought it was going to be it, i don't know it's presented like it's this natural process you get this baby and they just crawl up to your boob they crawl to your boob and they know exactly what to do and you know exactly yeah. what to do. And it's totally yeah. false. It's not, it's not that easy. Like you have to learn. The baby has to learn. Yes. That was like such a surprise. Yes. Nothing prepared me for how hard the nursing was going to be. Yeah. Did you go to like, did your hospital have like a, a class, like a birth birthing class thing before you had the baby? I didn't go to that. They did have yeah. one, but well, I, I went to the, they had a lactation consultant, um, after, after giving birth but yeah. i think it's like hit or miss how great right. the person you get is because i did not get a good person right <laughs> so they so we basically went to this, yeah. yeah 
we went to this birthing class and it's like they basically like show you around the hospital they're like this is where the snacks are like this is where the nurse <laughs> i'm like no t- tell me that i'm gonna be wearing giant mesh underwear and tell me why and tell me <laughs> like about the pads and tell me to buy the squirty bottle because it's gonna be too painful to wipe my vagina for three weeks after giving mm-hmm. birth like tell just it's like they like think women like do they think we're gonna be like scared of birth so they don't tell us i'm like no we just need to know it's fine like yeah it's gonna suck but like you just gotta tell us well i feel like i learned a lot more from tiktok i went down like a tiktok rabbit hole where people were talking about like the the vix the real uh, the like the real stuff the real stuff yeah like how you prepare the little like pad with the witch hazel and and tiktok's actually been much more informative than a lot of the books that i've read a lot of like just the resources online everything online's a lie yes like another one that everyone's repeated to me is that if you are nursing you're gonna just like the weight's gonna fall right off it's gonna get sucked right out of your body yep and so then you think am i doing this wrong am i Uh eating way too much like what is going on no that is a complete farce a lot myself included i can never lose like the extra baby pounds until i stop breastfeeding and that's it's like what this everyone yeah. has told me in person yes, yes as in soon person as you look it up in lo- online they're like oh no you should breastfeed it's gonna help with losing the weight yeah i haven't lost a, a an, an ounce yeah and i don't think i'm going to until i stop nursing no no and that's freaking fine like who who cares but don't set this false expectation mm-hmm. that all this hard work i'm doing is like they're like oh yeah breast breastfeeding burns so many calories does it apparently not like if it did calories in calories out we would lose the weight like it's so annoying well and i i struggle to produce enough so if i have a uh hard workout and like just keep like my calories down i just won't produce breast milk so i i gotta keep it real chill i can only do like some pilates yoga like i did some strength training one week and then boom like no production do you pump so you know like how much milk you're making uh-huh yeah. yeah so fascinating i have never like really pumped a lot so a lot of my friends are like you and they like no you know if i eat this my supply drops if i work out hard my supply drops because they can see it like coming out of the bottle into the bottle and i never knew but i'm sure on those days my baby was just screaming his head off because he was starving and i was like oh no i was cranking maybe today like whatever yeah like those types of things there's there's i don't know i don't know who needs to write the book i don't know but we need like an a honest person who had like a hard a medium to hard labor mm-hmm. like to tell us all of it like mm-hmm. it's it's wild what mm-hmm. else what else do we need to tell the people like stitches in your vagina i didn't know that that was like <laughs> i didn't know that was like a sure thing i mean i know some people don't have to have them but i sure do every time well, i don't know if this is normal but right when i was like fully dilated and i this is like so much detail for the listeners let's go let's go <laughs> we'll, talk about your, we'll talk about your cookbook next <laughs> but i felt like i was gonna die like i started shaking crazy and i had cold sweats and i and i genuinely thought i was gonna die and they're like that's normal i like what very good one to tell the people yes that's the is shakes. that normal yes i mean yes and who told us who warned no, us no, of that? nowhere did anyone say you're gonna feel like you're gonna no. die right when it's die. time to push yeah no, like your full body is going to start convulsing and like tell like I, why didn't our OBGYNs like I don't know at our 40 week appointment well you you wouldn't have made it to your 40 week appointment at our 30 week appointment why didn't they give us like just a 15 minute kind of debrief uh-huh. hey here are some possibilities one thing that i hear from women who had to have c sections is like i had they're like i had no idea like what a c section was what's actually happening i mean i don't even know what's happening i don't know how you like what what birth really is happening but with the c-section that's like a major major surgery like for any other surgery you would like have gone in for like pre-op consults and like they would explain to you exactly what's going on they would tell you like what your recovery is going to look like what kind of tools you need to recover at home for c-sections they don't even like what what i I don't know what the percentage of women who have c-sections is but it's not nothing like mm-hmm. we should be told mm-hmm. what that recovery is like. Mm-hmm. These, these idiots. We should we should write the book. 
Well, this whole thing's just made it more clear that nobody really cares about women. Like it's there's no places really to pump in public. When I was traveling, I only found one pump room in an airport. All the airports brag about it when you go online, and then when you're actually in the terminal, it's impossible to find a pod. And I found a pod, and it's like so depressing because you're just in a dark closet. (laughs) Was it one of those like Mama Va pods Uh or whatever? Uh huh. Oh yeah, been been there. It's I feel like it was like pitch black dark. I don't know. In my in my memory, it was like pitch black dark, and there's like one charger like that's like this big. Oh. The baby's was like, screaming. Yeah. Is this better than just being outside? I like wasn't sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, have you, since you're traveling a lot, do you, have you gotten the like portable pumpy things, LV or whatever? Yeah. wearable one. But I, I, but they don't work as well. It's probably, I'm probably a little crazy, but I prefer to carry the big one around because it's yeah. so much faster. Yeah. Um, oh, that's and, not like, crazy. It's, it's louder and like, you know, your nipples are sticking out and I don't care because yep. I just, I'd rather get it over with. Oh, totally. There's nothing worse. Pumping is the absolute, one of the worst things ever. Like you are literally stuck to a wall. You're chained to a wall like a prisoner in mm-hmm. your own home. And like, you can't do anything else. And I don't know about you. Maybe you've gone onto like a better schedule than I ever did. Um, but I would always like before bed, especially if I had to pump, I would always forget until I was like in my pajamas, like getting into my bed. And then I'd be like, <gasps> I have to go. Like I literally would turn into like a demon. I have to go um, like every time. So bad. I, I hate doing it. So my husband's great. He'll bring me the pump and like he takes Ugh. care of washing it and all of that. He makes sure it's charged. So that's like, really helpful. It's like his job. You just are the cow and he is yeah. the farmer. Yeah. <laughs> he like, yeah. sounds like an absolute gem of a human. I think some husbands really thrive with tiny babies like with newborns my husband george is like fabulous with newborns also like i never changed a diaper until the baby was like three months old some dads are that it sounds like you've got one too and then i think some dads are like really spooked by newborns and are like this is kind of your domain and they thrive with the older kids we we are lucky yeah we're lucky newborn thrivers for sure i think it's rare and every man should figure out how to drive and help their wife with a newborn but not all well, do i mean the dad doesn't have blood clots falling out of him you should change sure the doesn't. diapers you know change the damn the least you can do change the diaper because you're not wearing a diaper okay boom yes exactly boom. <laughs> you do it okay so you first traveled for work or you had your first big work thing three weeks after having the baby what were you doing? What's what's going on with work right now? Like you've got the book. What are you really excited about that's going on? Yeah, right. Well, I guess tell us about what you had to go do three weeks after and then oh. tell us where you are now. Oh, so we, my husband and I actually work, recorded a little podcast series that's going to be out soon. Cool. Maybe when this is out, I don't know. Oh uh, my gosh. Okay. I've I'll link it if it's dates. out. Um, okay. So we were finishing up recording that. And because uh, we started, about? can you tell us? Yeah, it's it's called deep dish, and it's where. So my husband's also a chef, so we yeah. each like deep dive into a dish and then tell the other person about it. Then we come back and cook. Come back to like our house. The and cook. history of it, or just how to cook it. What? Yeah, everything. Like history, random stories. Like there's a, these tamales that involved a murder. So like you know, go off on little food story tangents and it's like fun because that's kind of what we do normally we just sit on the couch and tell each other food things so we're just recording that um so we were finishing that up because i did a lot of work right before delivering and because she came early a lot of stuff didn't get finished and i had to do it right after so i i i would recommend to anyone try to keep the last month light because you never know keep it light (laughs) yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so f- we we like grind ourselves until that very last day right before delivery, which is so stupid on so many accounts. Like you're so freaking pregnant and uncomfortable. Like take a chill pill, but we're like, no, I'm gonna need to chill after the baby. Like I'm gonna have to take this. So we grind and grind yeah. and grind. Yeah, that must have been really hard. You had all these balls. Like still, how how early did she come? Three weeks. Three. Oh yeah, no, nothing crazy. But like no, I, but I, think- I mean. 
Like she was fine, but you were still yeah. fully like in work mode, probably. Well, I think a lot of it was I was really scared and kind of just in denial of being pregnant. <laughs> and like, but I was like so convinced I was going to die. Oh, I, don't know, I was so scared. So I think it kept my mind off of things, staying busy. Yeah, totally. I was not like one of those pregnant people who are just like really enjoying Chill. it and doing a maternity shoot and eating fruit. I was just like really scared the whole time. Yeah, that's a shitty, shitty feeling. Do you think that with, if you have another baby, do you think that now that you've like done it once, you feel like, okay, all those fears, I now know that it's okay? Or do you think this is just like going to be kind of how you are as a pregnant person? No, I I, I would love to do it again, but I'm already yeah. pretty old. I'm 38. So oh, please. I don't know if nature time. will allow it, but yeah, I would love to do it again. And I think I would enjoy it more and yeah. try to keep it chill the last week just like bounce yeah. on a ball and relax you know yeah just bounce on a ball and relax don't be recording a podcast when you're three weeks postpartum <laughs> it's so hard did you meet ham through work your best cooks your best chefs we actually met in culinary school <gasps> uh, so we've been married for 13 and a half years okay. we met we got we met and we got married like before we even graduated it all happened very quickly we were like, this is it. Let's do it. <laughs> so I'm really glad because it's nice to have been with someone through every stage of my totally. career. Because when we met, we were like really in the beginning. So we yeah. really got to grow together. So I think I think it was great that we just like jumped into it. Yeah. He is now also in the food media world. Was he always or did he go the restaurant path first? No, we both started in restaurants, um, and then I moved into media after our restaurant closed. And then he stayed in restaurants until the pandemic. And then uh, <clears throat> he was like a corporate chef for this group that had like forty restaurants, and then they all closed. And then we—that's when we all realized of all of them, yeah. And then we Oops. realized we really needed to like just diversify in food because it's it's so precarious, even in yeah. the best of times. Most restaurants do close, so. Now we just try and do as much as possible in food to just, um, you know, make a living. <laughs> I mean, so we've got, with you alone, we have a New York Times kind of, do you do you have a column or is it more video based with New York Times? It's more video based, yeah. Yeah. I love your New York Times videos. You have a show on the History Channel that is so rad. It's called... <laughs> Ancient Recipes. Ancient Recipes. And we explain the premise of it. Uh, yeah, we just recreate ancient recipes. Ancient recipes. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad, but they're always interesting. And and I get to talk to like a lot of food historians while working on it, so it's really fun. And I've always really been into old cookbooks, but I've never cooked out of them because you don't really have a reason to make like a yeah. fish head aspic yeah. at home. Yeah. So it's like, and really they're usually cool. like written really poorly. So you probably yeah. have to do a lot of figuring out. Yeah. A yeah. Fish like that aspic. Before we shoot anything, there's like a lot of like recipe testing because so much of it is Yo, so vague. You don't even yeah. know exactly what the ingredients are. So it takes like a yeah. lot of prep to shoot that. And before are we you get in doing there. all of that? Are you like the recipe tester as well as the talent? Oh yeah, I'm I'm a producer for that and so is my husband, so we kind of work on that together. So it's fun. We get to see the show all the way through from the beginning to the post production. And it's like really fun to be a part of the process. Yeah, that seems like a really cool show. Okay, so there's the New York Times videos, the History Channel. Um, and then let's talk about start here. Oh yeah, this, this is a book. <laughs> there's a freaking book and you guys i don't know if you've seen it in a bookstore yet if you've had the pleasure a the cover is just like so fun and it almost looks like a like early 2000s 90s like game boy like it's like start here big That's arrow what we were going for really oh my god i swear i haven't read that anywhere <laughs> that's what it looks nobody like nobody like, got it you're oh like god, the well only one I'm here. I get it. It totally does. It's like Pac-Man-y vibes kind of. And it's this big arrow and it's like start here. And it's the subtitle is uh, teaching beginner recipes. What is it? <laughs> instructions <laughs> for becoming a better cook. Instructions for becoming a better cook. Start here. Instructions for becoming a better cook. And it's 500 and 
something pages. Uh It's a behemoth. For reference, like a normal cookbook, an average cookbook is 200 pages. I I have a cookbook coming out in a few months and it's, I think, 220 pages or something. Like, this is a honker of a book. What... What's what what makes it really different? And if you were like a total beginner cook, where do I start in this book? Like what's the easiest recipe? How do you how are you gonna teach me how to cook? Well, I really wanted it to be like culinary school in a book. So cool. each chapter is teaching you a different technique. And the book is also half savory and half pastry, because I think it's all really fun and I think everyone should learn all of it. Yeah. Um, and then like at the top of each chapter. I kind of like there's a lot of text there's a lot of reading this is a cookbook you read so it's like goes into the technique goes into science really teaches you all about it and then the recipes are to help you better understand that technique because the idea is that eventually you can like go home learn these techniques and like make your own dishes but they go in order uh, like the techniques go in order from easiest to hardest and so do the recipes within each chapter so if you're at the begin if you're a beginner just start at the beginning you know okay yeah, that's incredibly smart. They go from easiest to hardest. That's the order of them. That's, that's the so, order. That's really, really cool. And you, I mean, how long did it take you to write this book? Well, it was about start to finish from like b- developing the concept to, yeah. you know, final edits was about three years. Dang. Did you <sighs> have... Did you like develop the concept and then sell it to a publisher or did a publisher like lock you down and say like, we want your cookbook no matter what it is? Oh, no, no. I, I had to develop the concept and like sell it. Because at that point when I did sell the book, I didn't really have, nobody knew who I was really yet. So I don't believe was, you. When was that? It was, it was 2020. Ago. Yeah, it was four years ago. <laughs> yeah. A lot's yeah. happened, you know, but um, yeah, really ironed out the concept in the proposal first and then okay. took it out to publishers. Um, okay. So you did this like mini leg or not mini, but you did an East Coast leg of the cookbook tour and then you took a break and was the break just like, let me chill and be a mom for a sec. Like the book can wait. Good yeah. job. Like yeah. what's the, what's the rush? Why do we have to do this like month long book tour? I think this is so smart. I I want to channel that slow down. Like after the first couple of weeks of like madness, like why not slow it down a little bit and enjoy it? Well, and the, and the the since the book came out so close to the baby, we right. did the East Coast first just so I can, you know, do day trips and not have to be overnight for a long time. And now the left, the West Coast is going to be harder because it is just like one very long stretch because it doesn't make sense to fly back and forth. So uh, she's a little bit older. She's a little bit sturdier. Yeah. I'm going to yeah, be sad, she's, though. She's got a kick-ass dad. <laughs> it's going to be harder like, for me than them. Yeah. Will you pump while you're on the road and on the West Coast? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Will you ship it back? How do you even do that? I looked into that and... Uh, I don't think it's yeah, worth it. A- so we're just, she's going to have frozen stuff and I'm yeah. just going to pump and dump just to keep the production going. Oh, you'll just pump and dump. Great. Mm-hmm. I was like, mm-hmm. wait, how, you're going to have it for two weeks. What are you going to do? Like bring a freezer with you everywhere you go? Oh no, those, <laughs> I had like originally thought that I was going to like freeze it and ship it. And then we were looking into that and it's tough because the freezers in a hotel aren't that reliable. Right. And I don't really want her to have milk that might not be at a safe temperature. Right. Yeah. Not ideal. Yeah. Not so, um, book tour sponsored by like Yeti coolers. <laughs> <laughs> like, who is getting this all around? Um, okay. Well, tell us where on the East Coast, where on the West Coast are you going to be so that we can find you? You're going to San Francisco. I'm so sad to miss you. Uh, yeah. It's not, it's not that long. A couple events in LA, a couple in San Francisco, and then Seattle and Portland. How did you decide where to go on your book tour? Were you like diving into your like Instagram analytics? Like, how do you know where your people are and where to show up for them? Um, you know, it's really the publisher. Yeah. They figure that stuff out. Yeah. Okay, great. That's a good answer. I, again, I'm just, I have this cookbook coming out in August and I'm like, just starting to figure all this out. I'm like, uh, who, where are, where do I go? Who's your publisher? You, uh, Union Square. Mm. They they should help you. 
figure all this they'll, out. They'll figure it out for me. Good. Yeah. I don't want to yeah. figure it out. I, it's I a lot. Like some, are you doing like what kind of book tour? What what kind of events are you doing? At like Q and A panels? What are you doing? It's just Q and A. Like I had these dreams of doing demos, but I think yeah. it was like a lot to do with the baby. So yeah. I am working Good. on the second book. Second book, oh. I think I'm gonna do more like demo y kind of interactive stuff. I'd love to like be able to cook for the people who come in. Right. How cool is that? I know it's it's hard because then more people want to come than you could possibly demo for. It's it's a tricky balance, but it sounds like it'll be really great. Yeah. But then the second book will come and you'll have your second baby at the same exact time. <laughs> I really hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> but part of me is worried that that actually might be what happens. What's do we, I know we don't have a second book title, but it, will it be like a continuation of start here or is it its totally own separate concept? Well, the way I worked on this was I, it was a lot of like spreadsheets and notes and I don't know, outlines. It was very, very like organized because it's a teaching book. I was trying to develop yeah. like what would the ideal cooking school be for coming from me. So right. the next one I want it to be a lot more fun. Cool. So I'm just like right now I'm just focusing on cooking food that I'm really into and just I'm trying to get like find my like what I'm really passionate about again because I've just been yes. like in work mode for so long. So I'm just like reading yeah. a lot. I'm writing a lot. I'm cooking a lot. And then I'm going to let it come together a little bit more naturally. Great. I, yeah, I found writing a cookbook, like the grind part of like really developing the recipes really uh, depleted my creativity for many months. Mm -hmm. Did you have kind of like a moment where you were like, I can't think of anything else right now? <laughs> That's what oh, I'm yeah. Thinking. I submitted my manuscript last August and then I had like a complete mental breakdown and I didn't okay. do anything Great. for like two months. I was just, all I did was lie out in the backyard and like recharge. Thank you so much <laughs> for saying that. I submitted my manuscript in June and I, 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 I write a weekly sub stack as do you. And I was like, I can't remember what food is like, I, what what do people eat? Because when you're writing a cookbook, the ironic part is you're like surviving on like Ritz crackers and a dream. Like you are <laughs> yeah. barely functioning. Like it's so much, it's such an intense labor of love writing mm -hmm. a cookbook. I, I truly, I feel like I've just gotten back into where I'm like feeling truly creative and like I have new interesting things to say about food. I, I'm not very consistent with my Substack. You are so consistent. I don't even know how you do it. Like, how do you? It's my I keep going. I know there are some weeks where I definitely like it'll be Thursday and I I send a new recipe every single Sunday, and I on Thursday will be like I I don't even I don't even like food anymore. Like what is food and then and so i'll have to like really dig deep and then there are other weeks like this past week i was like i know exactly what i want to do it's getting really cold everywhere like a lentil curry stew and then i like have the whole week to work on it and then the other weeks i'm like thursday the whole day is spent like cramming in a recipe it, it depends but when i when i finished writing the cookbook every single thursday was like that like final like ah <laughs> Yeah, do I, do? I would love to have you come and share a start a start here recipe on what to cook. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that would totally. be cool. Like, a, they're always complete meals, so something something in that vein that's like a you know full entree meal, the protein, the side, everything. On that note, let's get to our final questions. One of which is, I'm going to ask you to, to talk about what you cook when you don't feel like cooking, which we happens to us a lot as mm -hmm. cookbook writers um what are you so out on right now what am i so out on what are you so out on so something that's just like you can't handle anymore i'm so out on not sleeping <laughs> i just it's so i just want to sleep again i just it's so bad i, know. I think that's going to be the best part of the book tour I'm going to have full oh. nights of sleep without anyone screaming at me, without getting yes. pooped on. 
I just can't wait. I, you know, I'm the first so like, excited for you. The first couple of weeks, I was like, oh, this is fine. And then, like, it just like builds. Like, as, like I used to be okay with like maybe, you know, once a week not sleeping, but it's like sure. every night now for the last four months and actually four. your entire <laughs> final trimester because you're huge. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And now I just, I just can't I'm wait peeing to sleep every 30 minutes. I want to sleep again. I'm so excited for you to sleep again. And I promise it's like so close. You can almost face it. I not sleeping like the, the withholding of sleep is literally a torture method. Like Mm -hmm. my husband was in the military and like, they literally are trained on like, if the enemy captures you and they're not letting you sleep, like here are techniques to deal with this. Like it's a literal torture device, (laughs) not being able to sleep. And that's another one of those things that like, I don't know. You just, there's no way people are like, Oh, you know, new parents. So tired. Like, no, I'm not just tired. I'm like manic. I'm like feeling really out of control of my own body. And I've never depended on coffee the way that I do now. Like I cannot start my day without it. And we don't have a coffee maker. We have to get one. We're always running out in pajamas to go get coffee from across the street. You do need one, but also there's something just so like New York and perfect about the fact that you don't have one and you like have to go out <laughs> in public and like see someone. Where do you guys live in New York? Uh, we're in the East Village. So we're like in coffee shop central. Oh, just there's go so grab many... a thing coffee and then like have a mental breakdown. It's <laughs> like so strong. It makes you completely psychotic. Yeah. Yeah. No, I kind of love that you like have to leave your apartment. Wow. You guys are in the East Village. I feel like no one's in proper manhattan anymore. no nobody has is been we- like tell me like has that been like a conscious decision you're like we're not leaving manhattan we're not going to brooklyn uh yeah <laughs> like fuck brooklyn we really really don't like okay i don't want to say that because i have a feeling <gasps> we might end up there but we really do not want to live in brooklyn yeah we like we like it here we know that our place is small and we're constantly fighting rats but i think it's gonna make her stronger right <laughs> That is the most New Yorker resilience thing that I've ever heard. We know it's small. We're constantly fighting rats, but it's going to make her stronger. And you know what? You're right. And also she's going to be so fun and interesting and cool. Do you see yourself like bully raising kids in New York? You know, we would love to. That is that is our goal. And and there is a lot like there. It is tough because it is small. It is expensive, but it is great that everything is so close. Like. And there's a lot of free things for kids, very close, like just around the corner. There's a little theater that does like free classes for children. And then like there's a lot of little playgrounds. It's like there's a whole new part of the city that I haven't noticed before that I'm noticing now. Just like within this neighborhood, like before I just knew where all the bars were. And now I know where all the kids (laughs) stuff is. And it's like, cool. There's this whole other layer of New York we're discovering. So that's fun. Even like when you're a New Yorker, like there are so many playgrounds, but you just like walk right past them. Mm-hmm. And then now that I have kids, every time I go back, I used to, I lived in New York for a few years after college. Now that I have kids, when I go back, I'm like, there's a playground, there's a playground, there's a playground. Like they're literally everywhere. Mm-hmm. And I mean, on the East, the East village, like you've got the whole, you know, what is it? The Hudson river. No, mm-hmm. That's the one on the West. Yeah. The, you've got, you've um, got East river park. East side. Yeah. That's East where river we want park. her to learn how to ride a bike. Yes. It's a really nice long stretch by the river, and we think it'll that's be so it. nice, you know? Oh, that's like the dreamiest New York, like, young family thing I've ever heard. Like, <laughs> absolutely. Great. And then you just have to find somewhere to store the bike because your apartment that's is the tiny because <laughs> you kept living in Manhattan and now uh, you have multiple kids. <laughs> maybe but, they yeah. have like a city bike for babies. Maybe they have a stat. That's another it's business possible. idea for us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. First, we write our manual on. The real deal postpartum and then we start city bike for children mm-hmm. even i like i live in the country and i'm like oh we have freaking scooters and bikes up the wazoo like get these things out of here just let me rent these at the park what's one thing that's crazy is we were so stressed out about buying a stroller but we've only used it two times you can't you wear it it's all baby bjorn it's, it's the best. so much easier to get up and down the like the subway stairs and Oh. It's just so much easier to get around. Yeah. I will say, I mean, I'm. I think it's so cool that you want to write as a family in New York. It'll. It's the best city in the world. Like, it's where where else could you possibly be after you've been a New Yorker for so long? But I brought my family, my three kids, uh, 
last March, we brought all three and it was literally the hardest four days of my life. Like the double <laughs> stroller, the subway, oh, yeah. the subway elevators are always broken. And if they are in service, they smell like somebody has been peeing on them for 200 years. I have never taken a subway elevator. You're it brave. Truly <laughs> a heinous experience. I'm not brave. I, it was a ne- like three kids and a stroller. Like there's no other option. It was, it was a very trying week. But that being said, you have like so long to warm up to that. And also there's nothing better than wearing a baby. I, there are so many women who just skip the baby wearing phase. They just go straight to stroller, car seat. I love wearing my babies. I still wear cash. He's 15 months old. I'm like huge and chunky. And like my back is breaking after a hike with him. But I like freaking love having him smushed to my body. Oh, I like, love it. Yeah. Oh, like this is living. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's nothing better than this. Okay. The thing that I'm out on, as you can hear, just the congestion, the amount of germs and like snot in my house at all times is <laughs> next level with three kids. Two of them are in school. My husband is in an office with people. I'm mostly here, but like there's just the amount of germs when you have three young children is next level and no one's ever sick at the same time. We like take turns being sick. So like by the time I finish, it's the next one's turn that's what I'm out on. Like, how is there not, this is 2024. Like we can share Wi-Fi with the click of a button. Why can't we not be ill all the time? Well, and then since there are so many people in your family, by the time it comes around, it's, it's probably mutated enough to just keep the cycle going. It's the same family of viruses. It's a super bug, super (laughs) bug within these four walls. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly right. It's, it just mutates and mutates and mutates and like reinfects us. And then being a working mom when your kids are in school and they get sent home from school sick, everything, like everything gets trained, gets steamrolled. Like I've had to cancel podcast interviews. I've had to cancel like, you know, big interviews with press. I've had to cancel like so many important things because there's just not like, what are you going to do? There's a three-year-old who wants snacks every 45 seconds. So (laughs) That's my, I'm freaking out on <laughs> germs. Um, okay, this is one of my favorite sections of the podcast where we talk about our IRL LOLs of the week, aka our in real life things that made us like laugh really hard. What you got? You have a, you're in a funny phase of life. Do you have anything <laughs> good for us? Uh, you know, it's like really weird. Very little moments alone with my husband make me happy because we don't have them as often. Yeah. Um, so the other night she w- she went to sleep. She was asleep for a few hours. And so we decided to take down the Christmas tree. Yeah. And we were like putting away all the presents. And then I was like at the bottom of the Christmas tree trying to like unscrew it from the stand. And my husband was trying to pull it out. And, um, and then when I got up from the tree, there was, I was just like completely covered in pine needles, head to toe, stuck to the, like the dry vomit, you know, inside my glasses. <laughs> And I think the exhaustion plus like how ridiculous we were just laughing. We were like collapsing on the floor laughing. That was <laughs> just like human Christmas tree. <laughs> yeah. Just every part of me was covered in pine needles. It was very fun. And it was like the first time we'd been like alone doing something together in like a long time. Yeah, so that was really nice. Totally. It feels so good to have those moments of like, okay, we are our own people who still exist. And like, we just have this really funny, fabulous moment, just the two of us, because mm-hmm. they, they do become more rare. Um, oh God, that's really good. Okay. My, pretty much all of my IRL LOLs are funny shit that my kids say. So my in-laws were here for Christmas and we are Southern and Southerners love a good expression, a good, you know, turn of phrase. And my, my in-laws are really Southern and like really thick Southern accents. And they basically like speak in riddles. Like they have an expression for every single thing that they do. And they had just left. And my husband, my, my five-year-old Mattis was, sitting on the toilet pooping as five-year-old boys do and of course the door is wide open and george and i are sitting out in the living room and mattis screams dad 
George was like, yeah. And he was like, have you ever been on a wild goose chase? <laughs> and we were like, what? And he had like heard the phrase wild goose chase from my in-laws and like thought that it was like a real actionable <laughs> thing that you could do. <laughs> Dad, have you ever been on a wild goose chase? And we, it was like the same, like they'd been like, you know, Christmas is like stressful with three kids. There's so much going on. And George and I just like looked at each other and like died laughing. We were like, that is so fucking cute. Like he thinks that a wild goose chase is a real thing. And that is fantastic. Um, Okay. We end it by hearing, especially from somebody like you who just wrote this fabulous book that will teach us how to cook. What do you cook when you do not feel like cooking? What's it going to be? Egg and rice. Uh, Tell me more. Uh, just like steamed rice, we usually go for like a short grain, kind of like a pilaf. So we'll toast the grains in a little bit of butter and then steam it, uh, ideally with like some bone broth or dashi. We usually have it in the freezer. Ooh. And then when the rice is like, you know, like after it's done cooking, you fluff it and let it rest. Yeah. During that like rest time, we'll just pile some greens on top. So it'll just steam uh-huh. with the rice uh-huh. and then just like fry up an egg. Throw it on top. So we got rice, greens, egg, a little bit of, you know, togarashi or soy sauce. And yeah, I was going to say, are we like, what's on top? Soy sauce. Yeah, just soy sauce, togarashi, nothing crazy, but that's like a usual go to because it's got everything. You got your protein, you got your veg, you got your egg. That fabulous answer. I love that. <laughs> and I love the like one potness of just steaming the, the, greens right on top it's such a good trick but you you need a very big pot you do a nice wide greens take up so much space yeah yeah and they turn into nothing but like just put it in a much bigger pot than you would need just for the rice and then you can just load it up with like swiss chard or spinach or whatever you got and put the lid back on and it'll just wilt for you and then afterwards do you stir the greens into the rice or do you like kind of remove them so you can have like your rice your greens your egg I, I kind of remove it, but you could just yeah. mix the whole thing up, you yeah, know, yeah, whatever yeah. vibe you're feeling. Yeah. But no, I'm into like the fact that you still have three, like it looks like you cooked your greens uh-huh. on your own. But yeah. In fact, you did not. You did um, not. Okay. <laughs> you are the best. Get to that sweet baby girl who is uh, screaming for you in the background. Thank you <laughs> so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. This was fun. <laughs> <laughs>